2021 was a really good year for me when it came to anime and manga. A lot of what I've read has actually shaped what I enjoy doing today, and it's even overtaken my love for gaming. I'd rather sit down and watch an anime or read a manga than play a game that I've spent $60 on. Today, I'm going to take these 18 series and I'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. And I want you to keep in mind that this is my opinion, not like an overall consensus. I'm not like a genius anime reviewer or know how good plot and stories are. And that I liked everything that I read or watched. I'm not saying that any of them are bad. Like, if, if it would have been bad, it would have been cut and not on this list at all. I want y'all to also keep in mind that there's going to be spoilers for this video. Please keep that in mind because every series that I go down on this list is going to have a spoiler. And I'm also going to say whether I read or watched the series because I think honestly that makes a big difference and that's why a certain couple of these are where they are on the list, not higher or lower. But with that being said, if you like this kind of video, maybe leave a like and subscribe so you can see more like this and tell me what more you'd like to see. But with that being said, we're getting into the list. Number 18 is Doran Dororan. I'm hoping I'm saying that right, but this one hasn't been that great. And if you don't know what DD is, I'm going to call it DD because I really don't want to mess the name up and I hope that's not insensitive or anything. It's a manga series about a wannabe monster slayer who gets his chance when he meets a strange little being. Uh, he's cute though. Not the, not the, <laughs> not the wannabe monster slayer, but the demon. I, I started this series when it came out and my hopes for it have kind of been fading a bit. Keep in mind that it only has five chapters, and since there have been so many holiday breaks, it's kind of killed the momentum for it. So maybe that has something to do with me not liking it. When it gets more chapters, I'll go back and read through them all, and hopefully that changes my opinion on it. I really loved the first two or three chapters. They were amazing, and I was getting my hopes up so high, but the past couple have just felt really repetitive, and I just haven't really seen that much development in them. I'm hoping it picks back up, because I think that the premise of it's really good, and hopefully my opinion of it's changed by this time next year. Number 17 is Candy Flurry. This was actually a really good series. The writing wasn't great in some parts, but overall it was enjoyable. The uh, I think the biggest thing that made this series lower than a bunch of other ones is how abruptly it ended. My friend Dark Imposter, you can go check him out, he plays Battlefield, that unique kind of thing, uh, introduced me to this one, and the story was about a set few people who have something like quirks from My Hero Academia, except the quirks have to do with sweets. It had 19 chapters and it had so much potential to go on after that, it just really sucks when stories get their fire burned out over early cancellation. Number 16 is Mashable Magic and Muscle. This story is about a boy who was born into a world of magic without any, so it's kind of similar to how Black Clover is except there's a few things that are a bit different. And for a hot minute, I actually was thinking that it was better than Black Clover. I've uh, retracted that thought since about chapter 60, though. It's not that it got bad or anything. It's just that it started feeling really, really repetitive. Mash just got to fight a new person for the same reason that he's been fighting. Uh, basically just to keep himself alive because people hate non-magic users. Which I understand for this, but at least bring up more of a different reason. I feel like it's going to start getting there soon, but right now I just don't think that highly of it. I mean, at least in Black Clover, Asta was fighting to show that more than just that non-magic people can do stuff. He was like fighting for the world. With all that being said, Dot and Lance are some of my favorite side characters and MASH is a pretty funny MC. Number 15 is Darwin's Game. This one didn't make me feel any particular way when I watched it. And I'd like to point out this is the first anime on the list, not the manga. It's about a teenager who got invited to a death game from his friend in a moment of danger. His friend really just like, oh shit, I can't believe I just did that. The game is bananas, and if you die or lose in the game, then it's over for you in real life. The main character kind of felt eh for the first part of it, but he started picking up towards the back end of season one. The main thing I want to point out here that it's why it's higher than the other three I've listed is that I was content throughout the whole story. And I think that's a really important part that the past few have missed because they have had lows in all of theirs. Karino and Rain were A1 characters. I enjoyed them a lot. Number 14 is Records of Ragnarok. This one was actually really hard to rank. The concept of the show is amazing. The gods are thinking about destroying the world because humans are getting real bad. But a Valkyrie asked them to have a tournament of strength against the humans. A really solid plot, right? My god, was the pacing terrible. I don't know if it was better in the manga, but I'm hoping it was. The first battle was the most boring of season 1 and by far the longest. If I'm complaining about it this much, you must be wondering why is it higher than the other ones on my list, and that's all because of this dude right here. Adam was by far, by far. My favorite character for many series I ingested in 2021. Some of the other characters were really well written as well, so it helped push this rank up higher. God bless you, Adam. Not Zeus bless you. Fuck Zeus, but God bless you. Number 13 is Jujutsu Kaisen. Now hold up, before you click off the video, let me explain myself. I think that this was mainly a problem I had with the manga. 
I know people have been screaming over the show, so I'm planning to watch it this year. And I'm not saying that the manga is bad, I just couldn't vibe with it that much. I just think maybe some of the characters are more than likely expressed better in the anime. I know that Itadori's goofy personality is perfect for an anime style, and I've seen a few of the fights animated, and oh my god, they are amazing. I will say that the arc with Gojo's backstory is my favorite arc that I've read this year, and I can't wait to get to watching the anime so I can hopefully feel what the hype is about. Again, none of these I'm saying on my list are bad, I just didn't like it as much as some of the other ones. Number 12 is Demon Slayer, and <laughs> I know two fan favorites in a row. Trust me when I say that the top part of my list has a lot of really good stuff. My problem with Demon Slayer is that it just felt really slow. I know that it's just not a manga problem for me because I tried watching the anime before I started the manga. And I know that it's good. I know that it's good. I enjoy Demon Slayer. It just took until the Mugen Train for me to actually ha be hooked on it though. And I really didn't feel like the Entertainment District arc was that great either. Please don't hate me for that. I, I just, I, it felt weird to me. <laughs> Everything after that had me hooked though. I just feel that if I could have started enjoying this a bit earlier, then maybe it would have been a lot higher on my list. Except for the time skip at the very end after he beat Muzin. Uh, the weird, like, having the same designs but as other characters really bothered me. I don't know why. I just really did not like that. I do have very fond memories of characters like Inosuke and Giyu, though I loved both of them. Number 11 is Ranking of Kings. This was a surprisingly heartfelt show. I'm not done with season 1 yet, but I do have a strong connection with Boji and Kage. It's about a death kid who wants to be the strongest of kings. Uh, everyone in his family basically just treats him like a baby, even though he that's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a man, but he's, he's still a baby. But it, it's really good. <laughs> Everyone kind of just picks on him too. It's really sad, and I've had an unbelievable amount of emotions coming out of me from this one. Well, one of my favorite things from anime is to have great side characters. The main character is equally important, and the show makes you really want to root for Boji and everything for him. He just has so much struggles throughout the show. I can't wait to get done with season one and see what else the show has in store because it feels like there's a lot of lore to get through that makes me attached to more of the characters. Like, this has so much potential for backstory. Number 10, The Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Let me tell you, I hate what happened to this series. This is one of the most promising series to me and it got canceled way too early. This had one of the best setups for stories, period. It's about a young man whose village gets overrun with werewolves, but I'm just kind of paraphrasing. It's a lot more complicated and awesome than that. Not to mention, it has one of the most badass female leads that you'll ever see. Oh my god, do I love Grimm. The ending got rushed out because of the cancellation, and that just really sucked. You could tell that the author had so much more in store and planned for it. This was something that I was excited for every weekend, and if it wasn't for the ending being bad or being rushed, I can guarantee you this would have been a top five for me. No questions asked. Number nine, Ayashimon. Holy crap! Let me tell you when I say I love this one. I had a couple friends suggest it to me after the second chapter came out saying it was going to be a huge hit. And I have to agree with them. It only has seven chapters as of writing this, but each one of them has been a banger. An absolute, like, whoa. I cannot wait for next week. In fact, the reason it isn't higher on the list is because it has so few chapters and I don't want to get my hopes up in case it does get cancelled like The Red Hood or Kenny Flurry. The main character reads a lot of manga and wants to be a, a manga protagonist, so he's relatable, you know. If you have a few minutes to read it, I highly suggest it. It's a good series and I think it's going to take off and I'm even going to make a video about it soon, so stay tuned for that. Just really, really hope it doesn't meet the same end as The Red Hood or Kenny Flurry met. Number 8 is Naruto, yes, the first of the big three on the list, and let me say it definitely deserves its spot as one. However, it's my least favorite out of the big three. Now, the main reason for this being lower and being part of the reason I don't like it as much as the other two is after the time skip. Uh, it just felt like it was focusing way more on Naruto and Sasuke than it should have. When there was really good side characters, I think we could have had a lot more development on. Now, let me say I did read this one. This may be something that's better suited for the anime just because to get a little charm off of it. I know a lot of people love the anime, and I'm planning to do that sometime this year. And I will say that I did love almost all the characters. Sai has ended up as almost one of my favorite characters of all time. I really love the dude and the struggle, and the you could tell like what he was going through with the series. Now, one thing I'd say that we all can agree on is Naruto has the best villains, period. Ikotsuki's great. Madara was cool. We can, like, not talk about Kaguya and Plague Zetsu, that whole end there, but everybody else, really good. <laughs> I hope I don't get too hated for this one because I still really do like Naruto. 
Number seven, The Promised Neverland. The manga, not the anime. I heard that they cut Yugo out of season two and I'm not having that. He is my boy. <laughs> I've only read about three fourths of the manga, but I don't see the ranking going down any lower than this. I love the main three and each of them was circling around as my favorite character for a hot minute. I felt a lot of emotion from it and that's super important to me. I usually don't like child geniuses in most shows, but considering the circumstances behind this series, I can excuse this one. I've enjoyed every arc that I've read and has had me on edge to read more of it, and I'm gonna get through it soon. Number six, Goblin Slayer. This one is definitely not for the vein of heart. Most episodes have me screaming, oh sh! It's gory, messed up, makes you feel uncomfortable, and I am here for it. Not to mention that the plot was compelling, and it was really nice to see the cold killer grow some more emotion for the people around him. Like, he, he grew a lot in the first season, and I really, really enjoyed that. I haven't read the manga yet, but I'm planning to because I have no clue when season 2 will come out, or if it'll even come out. We'll say that it definitely deserves the second season, though. That is 100% a fact. The only reason I'm a bit more hesitant to read it over and waiting is because I don't know how well the fights are going to look at the manga. I also want to give this series credit for being a big help in keeping my interest in anime for 2021. Number 5 is Assassination Classroom. Another one that I read that I really want to go back and watch the anime for. Mainly because Nagas had me feeling a different way. That's all I'm going to say about that. This has quite possibly been one of the best, if not the best, series about fleshing out its side characters. I feel like I really got to grow with each one of them, and I really felt like I was part of Class 3E. Not to mention that I had some heavy, heavy twists that made me think. It also made me emotional. I cried really hard on the last couple of chapters. This was one of those series that I brushed off before I actually took the time to read it. Nagas' transformation as a character really made me think about some of my personality traits and how I could open up more. Number four, Toradora. Ooh, boy. If you saw my review for this one, you already know how I feel. I love Ryuji and Taiga both. I think that the relationship growth through the series from friends to realizing that they loved each other was perfect. My only problem with it is that Taiga looks like she's 12, but I got past that and enjoyed the series because I know she's 17 to 18. I can confidently say that I've never cried this much during watching an anime. Some parts I can just cannot think about or else I will start bawling. I am not joking with y'all. If you want a romance anime to watch, I would suggest this one. It was really good. Number three is Attack on Titan. And this is another one I brushed off that I really ended up enjoying. Man, I really gotta stop doing that. I've had people to ask me to watch this series since it came out. And if they call me stupid for waiting too long, I can't blame them. Seasons 2 and 3 were some of my favorite seasons of anime pretty much ever, and I think my favorite thing about this is just how good the side characters are. Characters like Levi, Jean, Hanji, and many more are just so great and their hardships and mental struggles are explored perfectly. This was a fight for the second place spot, and if season 4 wasn't a bit disappointing for me, I think that it could have had it. I'm really hoping that the second part of season 4 is going to be amazing, and it's going to be out by the time this video is out, but we're going to get a review of that at some point. And I'm ready for it to come out, but I'm not ready for it to end. Number two, Bleach. Another one of the big three and the most underrated of the three of them by far. I read the manga and I'm currently going through and watching the anime right now. I love every arc, and I mean every arc, and that includes the Full Bring one, which was a little lackluster compared to the other ones, but it's still pretty good. Ichigo is one of my favorite pro tags and he's just really cool, especially... At the end of the series, my god, my boy's looking dope. Gotei 13 is one of my favorite anime groups of all time, and each of the captains fit their roles to the T. I refuse to watch Bleach for the longest time for a stupid and funny reason, which I think I might make into a video soon. Let me know if y'all want to see that. I just can't believe that people really think that it doesn't deserve to be in the big three. I'm excited to get the Thousand Year Blood War arc animated, and it's going to be so good. And number one is One Piece. There are two very big reasons that this takes a spot for me, for my favorite thing that I read slash watched in 2021. The first being that I was glued to my phone reading the chapters. I finished a series in about a week and a half and got sad because there weren't any more chapters to read. I don't know how many series I could just blow through a thousand chapters in almost under a week and want more. <laughs> I really don't know how much stuff I could do that with. The second reason is that nearly everything sticks with me. I can remember stuff from like the first few chapters with little to no thought. I usually don't have the best memory when it comes to small things in series, but this one can do it for me. I think that the Straw Hats are the perfect group of protagonists and have a diversion of a group that makes it interesting. If you haven't tried One Piece, please do. The world building's good. They flesh the characters out. Well, they did more in the past. Now they're kind of just... Some of them are just there, but it's fine. But please try it. It's even overtaken my favorite franchise, which is Pokemon before that. 
Pokemon, which has been my favorite for over 20 years. That is insane. I, I love you, Oda. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it and that we can have a civil discussion about it in the comments. Please let it be civil. <laughs> I know that my list is a lot different from others and this is how I felt about them and I really wanted to be truthful with it. The main two that I'm like, no, I'm going to get a lot of hate for is probably Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer for being lower. Those two are like crazy, crazy popular, but I just really couldn't get into them as much. Let me know what topics you want to see in the future videos and I'll try to cover them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.